In a world full of distractions, there is one big question on every dog owner's lips. How do I become more than just the person holding the other end of the leash? We all get dogs with a dream in mind, a vision of the future. And if right now your everyday reality isn't quite that picture you had in mind, you are in the right place. It really doesn't have to be this way. You absolutely can and will be more to your dog than just the person who gets in between them and the world. The key is you need to be more sexy. More sexy than the neighbourhood cats. More sexy than the jogger in the park. More sexy than that half-eaten hamburger they just found on the floor. And yes, even more sexy than the dog across the road. I'm Tom. And I'm Lauren. Together Together we're we're Absolute Dogs. Dogs. And you're listening to the Sexier Than a Squirrel podcast. Welcome to the Sexier Than a Squirrel podcast, the podcast that teaches you how to beat the environment, conquer distractions, and be the best owner your dog could ever wish for. Now, today, we have one of our super cool game changers. She's written in, she's from the cool game changer community group, and she's struggling, Tom. She is really struggling. She'd like our help. She'd love the listeners to check in and listen in. And here's what she says. Hi, I really need some advice. My 10 and a half month old golden retriever has recently started to refuse to come near me at the end of a walk. He knows when he's going to go on lead. We practice the games. We've done middle. I've tried scatter feeding, magic hand. I hold his collar. I put him on lead as we're walking around. He does all of these things willingly. I think I mix it up. I don't try to put his lead on at the same time every time, but it's like he knows it's getting close. He just sees this as one big game. He stays out of reach. I cannot catch him. It's like a game of catch me if you can, but the other way round. And as I approach him, he darts and bows like he just thinks I'm very funny and I want to play. This can happen if he's had a short walk or a long play with the best of friends. He literally is unpredictable, or at least he is to me. I've tried calmly sitting and waiting for him. In brackets, this frustrates me. I've played games as we go around. We have a long line. We have open areas. His recall I thought was good. I thought I'd made it. I take out liver. I end up with every dog in the vicinity coming to see me some days as my treats are better than all of the other owners. But unfortunately, my dog is not interested. He loves his ball and you know what? I'm struggling. Some days it's taken me up to half an hour to catch him. He doesn't run away, but I simply can't get hold of the little blighter. I'm at a loss as to what else I can do. Okay. Help. This one's a good one and there are many, many things that we can do. So um, first of all, you're not alone. Dogs are very, very clever and dogs, and especially certain dogs, they can be very good at establishing whether there is a good deal on offer or not, or whether it's a bad deal. And you can almost feel like sometimes your dog's kind of x-raying your hands with their x-ray eyes to see if it is worth their while to do what you want them to do. Now, for me watching, I would reiterate again what Tom said there. Dexter sounds, and this is Dexter, aka 10 and a half month old golden retriever monkey, 10 and a half months old being a little monkey in the sense that he's smart. He's a really smart dog. Like he's a clever dog yeah. right and and the thing is when he's being clever like this he's almost two steps ahead of his lovely owner mm-hmm. right and just like you said tom we think we might be being unpredictable he's already predicted way yeah. before you're thinking i'm going to be unpredictable here yeah. he's like oh there she is trying to be unpredictable yeah. i spotted it so he's already ahead of the yeah. game and and we know this is a very common problem you might know someone in the park with this problem you might have seen someone on the walk with this problem you might have seen someone at the beach with this problem or this problem may be your problem right now now and we are going to solve it in this podcast so let's go through what would be our top tips for working on this and i think the first tip is actually that clearly he's rehearsing this quite a bit clearly he's finding a lot of joy in rehearsing clearly it. you're frustrated and so this is something that has happened over a period of time yep and so actually maybe let for the time being let's bring it all right back and let's have him on lead and let's not give him the opportunity to rehearse it for the for the time being. Because actively, if we can give this a bit of a rest and if he can just maybe not practice it for maybe even a few weeks, he might not immediately default to doing that and, and running away and so playing keep away in a few weeks' time. It might be road walks. It might be um, walking in, in different spaces. It yeah. might be um, taking him somewhere that he hasn't been before. It could be um, some some triple F in the house. That's our fitness program and that could be in the house. Um, it could be lots of different ways to do it. But let's just like 
change the the view of exercise. Yeah. Let's like turn it on its head a little bit. Exactly. Now, then what might we start to do and what might we start to infiltrate? Well, quite a few things on these on these, you know, alternative interactions, these lead walks potentially. First of all, what a, a game that is going to be super cool for you it, and play this at home first is a game that we call drop the lead and run because it's so much fun. fun and effectively what you're going to do is walk around the garden or walk around the environment that is you know safe to do it um and you're going to occasionally drop the lead and sprint away dash away and they're going to think your dog's going to think that's super exciting they're going to come up to to catch you and when they come up to catch you you're going to give them a party whether it be with food or you know it's tennis ball or whatever it might be you're going to calmly pick up that lead and when you calmly pick up that lead you're going to feed 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 and you're going to carry on walking now what this teaches your dog is that when the when the lead gets dropped when there is freedom you all of a sudden up the energy and bring the party now, I also think for me, one of the things I love as a tool in this scenario is I have my biothane long line. Yeah. Now, um, our long lines, they're on our website, so you can you can find them. But for me, I will trail that long line yeah. and I will leave that long line trailing. So whether I pick it up or put it down, at any point, I can grab and, and let go of it with my, without making a big deal of it. Yeah. So. On the flip side, sometimes I just have non-event picking the lead up and down yeah. throughout the whole walk. And at no point do I ever make a deal of it no. in the sense that I've removed freedom or I've removed mm -hmm. access. So for me, having a, a long line that can trail and obviously walking in appropriate places, so walking in spaces where your dog isn't going to tangle other people mm -hmm. up, um, that is something to consider. But don't make a big deal of the fact that actually your dog's going to wear this for a little while. Mm -hmm. And it's just a, a tool that empowers you as an owner to not feel worried about when you are or when you're not going to be able to get hold yeah. of your dog. Exactly, exactly. Now, next tip um, that, that we've got for you, this is a real, really, really fun one. Um, and it's all about tapping into that idea that he knows what a good deal is and he's constantly looking for a good deal. So how about we teach him it? So what we're going to do is in the garden, we're going to pop his lead on and um, we are going to have a party when the lead is on. So it's going to be like, there's going to be food, there's going to be fun, there's potentially champagne on arrival, or, <laughs> all the exciting experiences. Then what I want you to do, because it's in the garden, safe, you're going to take the lead off, you're going to totally ignore him. You're going to count to three and just kind of look beyond him, like almost like you're blanking somebody, right? You're just looking beyond them. And then what you're going to do is you're going to put the lead on and you're going to have a party and it's going to be really, really cool. And then you're going to take the lead off and it's like you've just switched off. Now, a game that's almost an extension of this game is the double clip game. So yeah. we'll have uh, double leads, um, so two clips, or if you haven't got a double lead, you can use two single leads. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to unclip one, feed the dog. We're going to mm. unclip two, feed the dog. We're going to clip one back on, feed the dog. We're going to clip another back on and feed yeah. the dog. Now, this is in the garden. Now, out and about, you might unclip one, feed the dog, clip one back on, feed the dog, unclip one, feed the dog, clip back one, feed the dog. So at no point is your dog actually off lead. And what your dog starts to see is that being on lead's a cool deal and having that lead around is also um, a, a good thing. Like it's, yeah. it, it's like you get somewhere and you see something you really, really like rather than actually being worried about it. It's kind of going to the cinema and seeing popcorn. Mm. Yes, get in. Yeah. We're happy. There's something we know here that we really, really like. It's a good deal. And so that's the double clip game. It's a game that basically teaches your dog that having that lead on yeah. and having or being around that lead or being in the presence of the lead is a mighty cool thing and not something to be running away from something to actively enjoy and this is something that's really important tom's already said it on the last game you do play it in the garden you do play it in your living room you do play it in the house you get very very familiar with this game and remember with dexter dexter and your dog might be very similar to a dexter so all of those dexters out there uh, remember that your dog we do ditch the bowl we do ditch the routine these are things that are already gone and if you're part of the sexier than a squirrel program you will have seen these are literally our lessons day one so day one you'll have ebooks on these things so it's really important that these are all part of dexter or your version of dexter's um, lifestyle yeah next tip is this is a, a really good one for all of you listening um is we make a point of when we do recall our dogs we often recall them to a boundary now a boundary can be absolutely anything it could be a tree stump it could be a bench a boundary could be a little wall and yeah. i was walking up the lane yesterday and there was a car coming and i popped my dog onto a hedgerow <laughs> literally like up into the sort of um, banks yeah and um, so so literally a boundary can be however you see it you might be in a situation where you've got i don't know a cardboard box a stool a vegetable box 
box. Um, you really can use whatever is in your vicinity. And we want you game changers, well, in true game changer fashion, to be flexible, resourceful, yeah. adaptable, optimistic. Look for the boundaries surrounding you. Now, the cool thing is with this is that then when, when it's about a boundary rather than about interacting with you, when it's about hopping up onto something, you can call your dog over pop them onto something and then release them back into the world again without getting the lead involved. But occasionally you might hop them onto a boundary. You might pop their lead on. They, you might feed them on the boundary, on the tree stump, and then you might take the lead off and, and send them away again. The key is that then actually you add in a little step between the, the lead and you, right? And and that is that then allows you to be more unpredictable. It allows you to outsmart those little kind of good deal calculators that you have as have as dogs um, and it's actually just a great kind of safety and dog management um, activity to do on your walks and I think that it, it gives you a level or a layer of um, owner confidence yeah. that will empower you to feel so much better than, than the place that you're currently at with your version of Dexter now I remember owning a Dexter when I was about how old was I I was 16 when I owned my version of Dexter and her name was Bella and I think one of the most frustrating things with Bella, and it sounds like Dexter's exactly the same, is he wouldn't run away. So he wasn't running away. He was hanging out in the vicinity. And that's what Bella used to do. She would hang out in that vicinity. But there would be this level of like keep away yeah. and this level of like catch me if you can in the yeah. wrong way around. And and this was the area that really most struggled, I, I most struggled with. So if I had taken Bella today um, and, and and trained her, her now, I would have suggested that all of her meals should have come through proximity games mm. for maybe, I quite like three-week plans. We talk about three-week plans a lot, don't we, Tom? Yeah. And so I would say for three weeks, all of her games or um, all of her food is earned through games that involve proximity. Now, what do we mean by that? Because proximity would be everything that... Um, I would want in a dog really for recall. So I'm thinking I want a dog who doesn't have any sort of keep away from my legs, actively likes being around me. And the types of games I might play would be Thunder, Tornado, Typhoon. I would have dogs that want to be close to my leg in lots of different ways. They might play um, sort of um, conversation starters and exercise like that. And I know for some of you are like, yes, I've got that one. Yes, I get that one. And others of you are going, what on earth lingo are you talking about here right now? Now, how can people get involved, Tom? So the the the, the kind of perfect next step for all of you with this struggle is to do the Sexier Than a Squirrel Challenge. And um, that is a 25-day challenge. It's online. You can take part, part in it anywhere in the world. You watch the video, you play the game, you unlock the real-life result. It allows you to get to grips with some of the games that we've talked about. And it's kind of that first step into the Absolute Dogs world. And so the way that you can get involved in that is by going to absolutedogs.me forward slash sexy. Um, and you'll be able to find out everything there. And I think the thing with Bella was she didn't run away. She just couldn't stay close. Uh, well, at the end of the walk, she knew the, the pattern. And so for me, if I'd had more understanding of proximity generally, proximity would have been the thing I would have invested in. Yeah. And I suppose that's what I want you to all consider is do you have that down? Like, have you nailed it? Mm -hmm. And so for me, I know I haven't nailed it um, or I hadn't rather nailed it with her. Um, and actually it was actively punishing to be close at that time. Um, and so I look at the difference as to where we are these days. Uh, dogs like Tokyo, I walk him, I hold his lead out and he trots towards you going, please mm -hmm. put me on the lead. And I know you guys are like, that isn't real. Seriously, don't frustrate me with this information. <laughs> I really mean it. it. These games work. What we do works. What we it's it's genuinely a joy to bring out that lead and he trots up to you going, please put me on it. I love being around you. And and for me, it's a very different scenario to live in, to work in, and, and to own. Absolutely. And the the kind of next tip that we've got for you kind of leads on from that, and that is that you need really clear criteria and really clear you know what do you want. And I think sometimes what we do as owners is we train like a loose recall and that's fine and for, for a lot of dogs and when you're topping up proximity and keeping it unpredictable you know th that that stays perfect for other dogs they tend to like to they, there's kind of like um almost like creep in the expectation there's 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 creep in what what they do and so what starts to happen is maybe they don't come in quite so close maybe they they figure out that distance at which you um, you can't catch them to put the lead on but actually we set that up because we weren't clear about exactly where we want them to be. 
So um, another tip is actually to, whenever we recall our dogs, especially if you've got one of these maybe creepers that like to creep away from what they should be doing, um, then actually recall them and maybe bring them around your body before rewarding them or bring them around your body to send them back. Maybe ask them for middle where they come around your body and between your legs and then maybe you you reward them there and maybe you just send them away again and i think this is really really important and um, for me just um what tom said there you send them away again for me quite often if i do put my dogs on lead i will then carry on the walk yeah. for a while longer yeah. so i don't necessarily put them on lead at the vehicle yeah. or i try really hard not to put them on lead close to the vehicle what i try to do is put them on lead and then i carry on walking for a bit yeah. um, and i don't make that the end even if they thought it was going to be the end i still carry on walking yeah. so i try really hard to not not making it a punishing uh, make it a punishing experience last one for me would be if your dog wears a harness or any type of um attachment that is um that is that's part of their walking sort of attire kind walking attire only please uh, but a harness or something like that i have one of um, my dogs everest really doesn't like her harness mm -hmm. and so actively what i notice is if i uh, hold out her harness what she used to do was always actively avoid coming back because of the harness experience so if you've got anything that your dog really dislikes that is um surrounding putting the lead on sometimes that might need some conditioning first before you try to um use that as a, a punishment for your recall effectively because yeah. that's what's happening is is you're recalling or you're you're popping them on lead and you're pairing that with something they really dislike yeah. um so i think being a little bit mindful of that tom yeah. um so so what what gear are you using and is your dog finding that exactly. actively Punishing. No, definitely, definitely. Okay, final, final one for me. That was going to be it, but I just I, <laughs> one more. I can't leave just it without more. telling you this. So, um, a, a little tip for those of you who are building proximity, developing proximity. This is basically what my walks with my dogs look like sometimes. Is um, think about it. We want to be the scarce thing in the environment. We want to be the thing that they, you know, like that squirrel that they want to be with and they get excited to be with when they have the opportunity. So what I'll often do is I'll reward my dogs for being close. And then I'll be like, I don't want to see you. Go, go away. Go sniff. I do not. I don't want you around me. And they're like, oh, oh, oh let okay. me back, let me back, and let then, me back. And then they'll kind of orient towards me or take a step towards me. I'll be like, oh, OK, then you can come back. You can come back. Feed, feed, feed. Magic hand middle. OK, I do not want to see you. Go, go away. away. Go be dogs. And then I'll be like, oh, OK, yes, you can come back. Yeah, feed, 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 if you say so. Um, and the point is, is that all of a sudden, the relationship has switched. Often we're um, we're the people that are trying to capture, begging, contain, nagging, nag and beg. Yeah. Whereas actually we're saying, I do not want to see you. I Off am you a go. squirrel and I want to do my squirreling over here. Oh, okay. Chase me, chase me. Fine. Um, and that really... If you must. That, if you must. <laughs> that's then speaking your dog's language and communicating what you want them to do in their language, which is very different to our language of repeatedly asking sometimes. And I think that most of all guys, remember here at Absolute Dogs, we like to do things differently. We definitely, definitely like to stay ahead of the game. What you're learning here i think is very very exciting we've seen all the tricks we've seen every <laughs> single one of them what you're doing you're not alone in in the yeah. sense that your dog um, and what you're going through we, we will have seen it before yeah. um, and i suppose most of all make sure you share the podcast make sure that you review the podcast make sure that we get this message out there because it's a really special message. And yeah. I think there are so many people who do things in a very different way. We're getting to do this in a way that is kind, that is fun, that is in, is lifting you up, is enlightening your days. Mm. It, li it lights our days up um, and we have a lot of joy in doing it. So please, please, please share this podcast. Make sure that all of your friends, your neighbors, your family, your lovers, your long lost lovers know about it. Um, and we really can't wait to share more with you. Absolutely. And with that, we'll see you next week in the next episode and in the meantime remember stay sexy hey before you go have you taken part in the worldwide sexier than a squirrel challenge it's a 25 day online video program huge energy amazing community and over 6,000 people are already taking part the only question is you know where you are today where do you want to be 25 days from now head to absolutedogs.me forward slash sexy